Hi there, everyone, and welcome to this edition of the Carolina Crescent. I'm your host, Mary Sturgill, and today we are going to talk about the wonderful variations of birds that we have here in the Carolina Crescent. And joining me now is Dr. Patrick McMillan, who's the director of the South Carolina Botanical Garden and an expert on all things natural. Patrick, thank you for joining us today. My pleasure, my pleasure. We couldn't get a more birdie day. I exactly, mean, that's exactly what I was thinking. We've been standing here for a few minutes now, and we've yeah. heard how many species do you oh, think? I don't know, 15 or 20 yeah. species just singing around us right now. And um, that's kind of the norm for this area for this time of year. You know, this is the first week in May, which is probably my favorite week to be out because you still have a lot of what we call our neotropical migrants that are coming through. And most of them, they're gonna be here to breed or here singing their hearts out, right? So where do these birds come from? Well, that's the thing. Um, in the Carolina Crescent region, all told, we probably have around 240 species of birds that are regularly seen here, meaning every year you can see them. Now, some of those are regular, but very rare, like a scissor tail flycatcher, which might show up at two or three places every year. But most of those are birds that we can reliably come out into the forest and the fields and see during some part of, part of the year. Now, among those, a huge percentage are birds that don't stay here all year. And these are birds that sing to us a tropical song, really, in a temperate forest. And they're coming from places as far flung as Brazil and Ecuador, Central America. Lots of our birds winter in places like Belize, Costa Rica, um, even Ecuador and Brazil. Oh, wow. It's just incredible. So they spend the winter there, right. and they're really from tropical families of birds. Right. But they have adapted to come to take advantage of spring yeah. here. So t let's talk about some of the ones. And, and so when we're out hiking in the Carolina mm -hmm. Crescent, what can we expect to hear? Like, what are we hearing? Well, this is an absolutely typical assemblage that's right around us, right here, at a middle elevation. Like, we're up about 2,200 feet in elevation. And that at that elevation, you get some of the most beautiful birds that we have that visit us from the tropics. So singing around us right now, uh, obviously, we hear that really sharp, we do, we do, we do. <laughs> that, that is a hooded warbler. And there's hardly a more striking bird, if you can catch a glimpse of him. Um, that bird has this beautiful black hood over a bright yellow mask and a bright yellow body that um, really make it one of the most charismatic of the warblers in the area. And, you know, singing with it here and there, we'll hear a slightly different tune of a warbler that's not nearly so colorful, but occupies the same strata, the same area of the forest okay. that the hooded warbler does, and that's the black-throated blue warbler. So, lighter song, slightly different song, and a much less brilliant bird, but still really beautiful in its own right. And then, uh, you know, the really, really loud chewy, 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 chewy that oh, yes. we've been hearing yes. up on the hillside up there belongs to another warbler. But this one is mostly down on the ground, and this is called an oven bird. And most of those birds with tremendously huge voices and beautiful voices are brown ugly birds and the oven bird <laughs> is they a have warbler to make up for the ugliness with their right right <laughs> the oven bird is one of those species it's a warbler that really doesn't have any flashy color at all but yeah. has this really big voice okay, to ring out apologize to the, to the bird lovers yeah. <laughs> mean to call it ugly but well, it's not as brilliant it's not as showy right it's not as showy but it, it is beautiful in its own right <laughs> And then, you know, way up at the tops of the trees right now, we're hearing another warbler, which, uh, zee, 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 zee. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. And that's one of the easiest and one of the most characteristic songs of these forests. And that song belongs to the black-throated green warbler, which is a beautiful bird. But it's almost always at the tippity tops of the trees. And you mix with that, the worm-eating warblers with their that they're singing out there, and the black and white warbler that has that song that's kind of like a squeaky bicycle tire. And you, you've got really the assemblage of just one group, just the warblers, and they're all occupying the same space. And they're able to do that because species like the oven bird use the ground. And matter of fact, they even make a nest on the ground. Um, that's why they're called an oven bird. It looks like a pizza oven oh, yeah. when they're done with it. Yeah. And um, these are all birds of the forest too. And the, the oven bird's a great example of, of why having all of these forests preserved and a continuous cover of forest here in the Carolina Crescent is so important mm -hmm. because oven birds have been shown to need more than 200 acres of forest just like we're in, 80 plus year old forest. Right 
just to successfully raise one nest of young. So the oven bird's taking advantage of what's going on, on the ground, and the worm-eating warbler is doing kind of the same strata. You go just above that into these dense rhododendrons and low branches, and the black-throated blue warbler and that striking hooded warbler occupy that zone. And the black and white warbler acts like a nut hatch going up and down the trunks and the main branches of the trees, sometimes even hanging upside down. And then way up at the tippy top, you have the black-throated green. So they're able to partition this resource in this forest so they're not directly competing with one another as they're coexisting in the same spot. And you know, they've flown all this way back um, just because of the abundance of caterpillars that you know are just booming because of all the fresh young leaves on these trees that aren't full of all those secondary compounds that keep insects from eating them yet. And at this time of year, there's so many caterpillars and so many insects, our native birds can't possibly eat them all. So, so they're helping us out. They're helping us out. Exactly they are. Exactly they are. And you know, it's one of the reasons why I tell people plant an oak tree because something like 360 plus species of caterpillar exists just on oak trees. Wow. Yeah, so it's an incredible resource that and we so have. Draw on for the birds. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And you know, warblers are just part of what's come back and part of what we're hearing. To me, probably the most beautiful one is the one that sounds almost like a robin out there. With it's, it's almost like a robin's voice, but a little more staccato and a little more vibrant. And every once in a while, you hear it go. You hear it make that um, chipper, chipper. Yes, yes. And that's the that's the call, not the song of the scarlet tanager. And this is a bird that is way up in the tip tops of the trees with the black coated green, but it's one you can actually see. We've seen a couple fly over and, and land in the tops of the trees. It's so brilliant red with those jet black wings, one of the most beautiful birds. And that bird flies all the way from Peru, Ecuador, and Brazil just to be here. So not all birds that are ugly brown, um, not all of the ones with beautiful voices are, are ugly, ugly brown. brown. <laughs> no, we've got some really beautiful voices yeah. in the colorful birds, yeah. you know. Um, and not all neotropical migrants are really brilliantly colored. Right, exactly, because we do think, we, when we think of a tropical bird, we think of a very brilliant color bird. Right, right. And, you know, um, among, the, among these, just the warbler group here in the Carolina Crescent, we have pretty much an unparalleled diversity because whether they're coming here and staying for a few days and moving on up into the far north, or whether they're coming here to breed, during this time of year we can hear them. How long are they here? Well, um, for some species, like um, I just happened to hear um, a Cape May warbler, like really high pitch sound up in the tops of the trees. Baltimore Orioles that I've been watching in these forests this time of year, they're not staying here. So they might be here a week, two weeks, sometimes three weeks. It depends on the weather patterns before they move farther north to breed. And a species like the black pole warbler is going to go all the way to tree line in Canada to breed. Um, but the species like the, the scarlet tanager, those are going to be here for the duration of the breeding season. So they'll be here probably through August, um, some of these species through September. And you know, we get um, 36 species, I think, just of warblers that oh, come wow. through our area. Yeah. So pretty much every warbler yeah. in the eastern United States, um, you can reliably see, even at the South Carolina Botanical Garden, we've seen all of the warblers except the Kirtland warbler right. that are known from the eastern United States. And I'm sure one of those at some point or another is gonna pop by the garden. They're just so endangered that there's not a lot of them right. to right. spread around. But um, it is incredible to think, you know, um, that, that, that here is one of the best places yeah. to see these birds because we're, we're kind of like one of those catch points yeah. for places to the north when you get to this beautiful blue wall. So basically they're stopping here to feed and because they've traveled thousands of miles already. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Feed, rejuvenate themselves for the next, the, for the second half of the trip really. Many of these species. Yeah. And then, you know, the, the hooded warblers, the black-throated blues, the worm-eating warblers, the oven bird, the, the scarlet tanager and the black-throated green, they're here final final resting spot you know where they're going to actually have their their uh their young and raise right. their young and make their families and they'll be here they'll molt and then they'll be in their winter plumage or their fall plumage and that's the point when they leave and go back down to the tropics so it's incredible to think that you know the resource that we have here 
in terms of this flush that's been happening for eons in these trees has been so important that it's drawn birds from families that are tropical just to be here to enjoy the abundance that we have that is so abundant that all of our birds that stay here all year, if they worked as hard as they could, couldn't possibly come close to eating a portion of the caterpillars that are produced in these highly productive for us. Nature has a way. It's Nature incredible. has a way, yeah. And what a great time of year. Amazing. Yeah. So thank you so much for joining us and, and kind of educating us on the different bird sounds we can hear. Now we can try to distinguish them for ourselves. Yeah, a few. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it's a great, um, you know, there's a lot of great apps that yeah. you can get on your phone. And I think a lot more people are learning bird songs today because a lot of those apps yeah. include the sounds and the sounds of similar sounding birds. So if you yeah. learn something like a robin, you can learn rose bursting grosbeak and tanagers because right. they sound similar. So we'll do that. We'll put the we'll put those apps on yeah. uh, our Carolina Crescent website so you can kind of check which ones work for you. Yeah. And uh, we'll we'll do that for folks. So now is the time to get out in the Carolina Crescent wherever you are and yeah. enjoy these this beautiful melody we have dancing in the trees. Absolutely. Yeah. Best Pat time of year. Absolutely. Patrick, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the Carolina Crescent. We'll be sure to put those apps on our website so that you can distinguish the cacophony of voices that you can hear in the forest as you go out and trek along the trails of the Carolina Crescent. Until next time, I'm Mary Sturgill.